All right, so I don't know where to begin with this, but I'm just going to go over here. The Archimedes, 223 over 71 is pi. 22 divided by 7 would be essentially pi. All right, so here's the neocortex. Now, when it comes to the crown chakra, it has 1,000 petals. But that's basically your cerebral cortex. 1,000 petals, the crown chakra. I know there's something to that. I haven't figured it out yet. Down here at the bottom, there's something to it. I haven't figured it out yet. But all in between, I'm just going to explain. Now, I've mentioned before with the octopi. Octopi or octopus. Eight face. You know, has a puss as a face. Octo is eight. And pi is 3.14. Anyway, I'm digressing. So you have 12 cranial nerves. Eight lobes is 96. 96 plus 12 is also 108. The infamous 108. Now, 96 divided by two because there's two petals on the third eye chakra. Now these two petals, I believe, are the pituitary gland and the pineal gland. You get 48. Now overall, when you add the throat, thoracic, lumbar, sacral, and root, you'll get 48. But I'm digressing again. So there's 16 petals in the throat chakra, which is 16 cervical nerves. You have 12 petals, 12 thoracic nerve pairs. It's the heart chakra. Five lumbar pairs, in your solar plexus, 10. Now these numbers are important to understand. Then you have your sacral, 6 plus 4. You have six, uh, sacral and the root, 6 plus 4 is 10. And you have 10 nerve pairs. Then at the very bottom where it says root chakra, you have your filum terminate or your anchor for your spinal cord. And I believe this right here, how they have the design in here and then they have the filaments coming off of the pedals. I believe this is how to reconnect nerves. I believe that the far ancients understood chakras, which was a way to understand the nervous system, which means that if someone got paralyzed, broke their neck and was paralyzed from here down, there's no problem. Oh, you're only broke your neck. You're only paralyzed from waist down to the neck down. Come on in here. Let me fix that. And this was a diagram basically to help re read it like your axons at the nuclear core and then the roots to the root body of the body. The environment will dictate the regrowth of nerves and they will resheathe themselves, like myelene sheath. Basically, the more you use the limbs that were broke or paralyzed, the more you use the limbs that were paralyzed, basically, the more the nerves are gonna grow back, conducive to how you're using it. Like, let's say I got paralyzed from the waist down and I only use my right leg. Now, all of the right leg nerves are gonna grow back. This is, a, this is synonymous with epigenetics. Depending on my environment and how I use my body parts, it'll form conducive to how I'm using it. So only my right leg is going to be able to filament out. But if I use both of them, after these axons are connected, then these will regrow and re-filament. Now look, here's a praying mantis ganglia. Now over time in evolution, this ganglia here merged with the other ganglia, the, the crown, the top. This is the ganglia in an insect that is decapitating it, and it can still function because it has all these individual nerve ganglia because it's not a centralized nervous system. But over time, when it comes to mammals, especially our brain, two of these ganglia fused, perhaps even three, basically giving us about three brains in our head. We have a limbic system, an extra or super paralimbic system, and then our neocortex. We have basically three brains in our head, one in our chest and then one in our stomach. We have five brains. And if you want to get technical, there are four in our head because we have a super paralimbic system from an extra paralimbic system. And in the praying mantis, there are 10 ganglia. There are seven main ganglia or chakras inside us. That means at least three of these fused to, become, to basically become our whole freaking brain. And once these ganglia centralized, the rest of the other ones relied on it. But like I was saying, these ancients, the far ancients, 13,000 years ago, these people knew how to fix this stuff like it was nothing. And that's where the idea of chakras through Indian, Hinduism, all this came from. That's one of the oldest religions in the world. They dug up the ancient past and tried to make sense of what they could. So they're talking about feelings and spirituality when that's energy and nerve, which is electrochemistry. Because we're electric, bio-organic robots. Okay, so we have Arshna, the chakra, 96 petals. Okay, so the octopi, octopi, hemocyanin, he bonds 96 molecules in his blood because he doesn't have hemoglobin. Hemoglobin. So you have octo pi, which is 25.13, eight tentacles. And this is a mollusk. Now you have earth. You do the same thing. You get roughly 25,000 miles. Now you got the human brain. We got eight lobes in our head. We got 12 cranial nerves. You multiply 12 times eight, you get 96. 96 and the 96. 
and the brain isn't fully formed until you're about 25 years old. Is that a coincidence? Now, the reason why oysters and clams are female in nature, you're, you know, eating clam, is female in nature, the clam. So, Mother Earth evolves mollusks, okay? They're one of the first animals to evolve because right now it's trying to make a mirror of itself, which is the octopus. See, we are the mirror of the universe. The universe forms us on Earth because it needs a place to put us. But Earth itself can do the same thing, and when it evolves life, which is us, to mirror the universe, it evolves its own self as the octopus. And that's why the octopus is such a unique animal, and it's oh, so alien. It's technically not alien. It's just Earth's version of itself, just like we are the universe's version of itself. See, we get our brain from the universe, but we get our body from the Earth. We obviously get our body from the Earth because it's made of the same matter constituents, but its design is of the universe. That's why we can superceive the universe, and we're the only animal on Earth that can actually superceive it. Now, I'm just throwing this out here with the pedals, okay, with 48, because 48 and 48 is 96. Well, 6 times 8 is 48. Basically, this is the 6, and this is the 8. Just to help out, the 6 and the 8, this is y, this is x. This is Trinitarian, this is square. Or you can say this is x square, and this is pi. This is the spatial dimension, this is the temporal dimension. This is unmeasured time, this is measured time. This is bosonic in nature, this is fermionic in nature. This is a force in the area, and this is a measured energy in the area. So this is an emptiness of force, and this is fulfilled of energy. So technically you have a hole and then something to put in the hole. Pardon the crude sounding nature of that. Uh, I don't know. Maybe it's all just a coincidence.